this is Grisha from CodeLab, and this video will be a walkthrough for how to convert class components to functional components. This video is a follow-up of the previous slides video that covered the basic syntax. This is a bit more complicated, where the class components is a bit more logical, and this is how to use inline functions and hooks to replace basically what the class components were meant to do but in fewer lines of code and easier to read. So let's get started. So if you're following along, uh, this is our app.js where we have two different components. It's gonna be class and input. This is gonna be the functional one where both of them are gonna do the same thing. We've, input, we've inputted Bootstrap and we've created some simple JSX code where we add padding and then we display a class component and then a functional component. Uh, I'll quickly go over the class component version of the code and it looks like a lot, I know, but I'll go over it real quick. So these are just some components that we've imported from React Bootstrap where we allow like text boxes and we can track what exactly is written in the text boxes. Uh, and of course, we have our traditional class and then extends. We have our constructor that initializes our local variables. In this case, we have input text and display text, which I'll elaborate on shortly. We have our binding methods where we have update text and print text. And I'll go over the methods shortly. And we have our render method where we return a JSX code, where this input group holds our text box, which is under form control, and our button. And we can display our text here. So I'll go over it real quick. So this is our form control, input group, etc. I'll type something here. This would be our input text. And then we would print our, we would press the button, and this would be our display text. So this does our JSX code, and now I'll go over the logic real quick. So, yeah, basically, when whenever we do these form control things, it keeps track of every character the user types, and this would be on change. So every time we click a character, we will go to update event, where we would use this dot set state to update input text. Now, whenever we do this on change, it'll create an event object where event.target.value would store the exact user text input as a string. So if I do A, then set state input text will be A. If I do AB, and it'll keep updating, etc. And yeah, so that's why we have event here. It'll do an event object. We can extract anything we want from the event. Event. It'll keep track of keystrokes, um, what exactly key we're typing, what character, what string, etc. It has everything. For now, we just use event.target.value. Um, and yeah, so whenever we do button on click, when we press this button, it would print text. So what print text does is it grabs whatever input it's already saved using update text, and it would set it to display text, and it would reset the input text which is the value of this. So whatever I type here, that would be the value, which is constantly changing because we every character we press would call update text. And whenever we press the button, it would reset input text, which would reset the input field and set a new value to display text. So I'll do that here and it's mirrored our output. Anyways, so this is a lot of logical code and we can translate to this, we can translate this to functional actually pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we can extend this. Yep. Okay, so now we have our plain functional component for it with the, just a div to return as a JSX code. And let's go line by line and let's try to translate. So first of all, we're gonna need, we can omit this import React from React because we no longer need to extend React component. Uh, we can copy these because we do need all these tools from Bootstrap. 
Okay. And, oh, oopsies. Okay. And we do need local variables, but instead of using set state, we can use use state, which we do need to import. So I'm just going to quickly import it. Use state from React. So here, while we're, while we're importing React, we just have to update one hook from, we have to import one hook from React called use state. And we do have two local variables, so we're going to have to call use state twice. Uh, let's do one for input text and one for display text. And let's initialize that to an empty string. And same thing for display text. So one thing to note that we only have to use use state once to initialize it. And then from then on, whenever we're changing input text or display text, we would use its corresponding uh, set input text or set display text instead of binding methods and then calling them later. We do have to create inline functions for them, however, instead of the event handler methods from class components, but it should be pretty easy. So we'll do update first, where we do need the event parameter again. And over here, it does this dot set state, and then it sets input text to a new value. But here we went over that we can just copy set input text and whatever we need event.target.value. So it does the same thing and we can clearly understand what we're sent setting input text to. Same logic for print text, except it would take two lines, whereas class component took one, but it was a little less clear. Uh, so we're going to do set input text again to resetting it to initial value and then set display text to whatever input text is ap after all the updating. Cool. So now we have all our logic. We've done basically almost the same line of code, but definitely less verbose and we've omitted all the this. And our JSX code is pretty much going to be exactly the same. So we'll copy this and we have to get rid of any instances of the keyword this. So let me just format this real quick. Okay, cool. So now we can't have this dot state because we just have a local variable input text. We don't have a method anymore. We have a function. Get rid of any this. And this makes the code shorter and much easier to read. And yeah, that should be all we need to convert class to function. And we notice that even though it might be almost the same lines of code, it's much easier to read. This is definitely a lot more words than necessary. This is very concise and clearly can tell what exactly we're changing and what we're calling. Whereas this is a lot of this dot state and this, which is, I find a bit unnecessary, but we can test, go ahead and test it over here um, where we can just refresh it. Um, this should do and this should do the exact same thing, which indeed it does. So yeah, this was a quick conversion from class to functional. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye.